Today on Switch to Linux, we are going to have a look at Elementary OS 8.0.1. Now, I did try and do a video on Elementary OS 8.0 when it came out. I did more of a commentary run instead. And the reason is I could not get it to run on anything. AMD, Intel, real hardware, fake hardware, virtualization, GNOME boxes, VirtualBox. I was not able to get it to run. A few people were able to get it to run, but I did actually have a lot of people in the comments saying, oh, I thought it was just me that was having problems. No, actually in the blog post, the developers did acknowledge a lot of people could not get this running. So what they actually did to fix this is they uh, added and, and updated the Linux kernel. They went with the hardware enablement stack on the Linux kernel, which allowed uh, the system to work with a lot more pieces of hardware. I don't know what it is. My hardware, I ran a variety of new and old hardware Intel AMDs I was not able to get the old one to work but this one does work uh, this worked on VirtualBox just out of the gate so that's the environment we are running this on and this is on the MSI i7 uh, 12th gen so I wanted to start in the login screen just to show you that uh, when elementary OS is working uh, right now the login options show secure session and classic session. I have no earthly idea why they chose those words. The secure session is Wayland. The classic session is X. Uh, there, I, I have, I have no earthly idea what is going through their minds that they want to change the, the narrative on that, uh, secure versus class. It, it should say Wayland versus X because that's what everybody understands. That's the terminology that is used. I am going to use the X session simply because in my testing on virtualization, the X session does actually work better. And so we're going to hit our login there, enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. And we will land on the Pantheon desktop. So let me just give you a very brief overview of the Pantheon desktop in the event you are unaware of it. It does try and be an Apple clone. Uh, now in their old, old documentation, they acknowledge that in their newer one. They do not acknowledge it quite as much because eh, who wants to be sued by Apple, right? <laughs> so it does make sense. They have diverged from that a little bit, kind of making a system of their own with a lot of the look and the feel of the Mac. So if I pull up the files, for example, you can see it clearly does have Mac-like uh, appeal to it. So up here, we have our, in the upper uh, right corner, we have a dashboard panel down here, and you can very quickly turn on light mode or dark mode or adjust the size of the fonts on the screen. So you can very easily toggle all those options. There's an on-screen keyboard, which I don't see showing up, uh, maybe because of virtualization. And there's a screen reader, which I will not even push that button because I do not want my computer to talk to me. I have flashbacks of HAL 9000 when computers start talking to me. So, you know, call it a fear. I don't know. Agoraphobia type for computers talking to you. I don't know. Uh, so we do have the options uh, down here or shut down or lock. This is where you hit your log out session um, or you can hit your user account settings over here. You can make some adjustments into those. And our settings panel is down here as well. Now, one of the things that they are doing is they are starting to get some of that integration that you find with GNOME where we have a lot of apps have uh, the ability, for example, to be controlled individually as notifications. So this is useful if you have an app that is not really respecting your notification systems. You can turn on, turn off various things over here. So for example, you can pull up any given app that is installed on the system and then you can display it in the notification center. You can display it with sounds or you can display it with bubbles. So you can turn all of those on, all of those off for every individual system itself, which is a useful way of fine tuning and fine tweaking your system. You can do a global do not disturb. So those are nice features inside of this. Other changes inside of the system here is in our network settings. I got to find our network settings here. So inside of our network settings, we now have the options to disable or reduce rather background usage data. So when you're connected to individual networks, in this case, our wired one through the virtualization machine, background tasks like automatic updates will be paused. And you can set these to automatically connect or not. 
uh, very easily. Now, those are features that nearly every desktop environment has, but they hadn't had some of those options uh, in the past uh, because it is a new desktop environment that's not based on anything else, sometimes adding features in. Just look at the Cosmic desktop environment option. You can come over here to your more advanced in your general tab if you want to set this to a metered connection. So you can do that. That's always a, a useful thing if you want to control things like auto updates and, and things like that. And so you can see here that uh, those are the, the major changes inside of your settings panel. Other things in here have not particularly changed, so we're not going to worry about those. One of the issues I had with the system is notifications never seem to disappear unless you actually actively do it. So you can see here this long line of notifications going back to like Thursday when I first installed this system. Okay, updates are available. Okay, updates are available. This is simply restart the system. Oh, look, I restarted it again 26 minutes ago. Updates are available. Updates are available 27 minutes ago. Drivers available Thursday. Updates available Thursday. Restart is required. Like I've done these restarts. I've installed these updates. The notifications will not go away. You will have to manually clear your notifications, apparently. Uh, that is probably the downside of what they have, but that's perfectly okay. Now, inside of their uh, other changes that they had announced to the system, searching for things inside of the App Center should be a little bit quicker. And I did actually find that myself. Let's just search, for example, LibreOffice. If you've had experience with this in the past, this is really, really fast. Uh, search features. So they did a massive amount of improvement on it. Now, when you go to download something, uh, you will, you'll see here that they are, I think they're taking more use of the new flat hub type system. Nearly everything in here is going to be flat hub. So they'll take advantage of the new flat hub systems. They are telling us that this is system folder access, including anyone's home folders, but not including internals, things like that. So this one, one of the issues I've had with them in the past is they have given you these warning signs about uh, installing this software could potentially be dangerous. And they did this on reputable applications like LibreOffice and GIMP. It looks like they're taking they've gotten rid of that. And that is a wonderful praise. I've talked about that for like two or three versions of this since they introduced that button. Uh, so I'm going to cancel this for now. Hopefully that cancels. Uh, just trying to do that just to see if that pop-up button shows up. So this is a massive improvement and I haven't seen exactly if they're using, um, if they're using the, the new system for, uh, flat packs to manage things. Let's have a look. So this one here, the reason I look at Google Chrome is this is not an official flat pack. I'm trying to see if they give us any warning about, about this and I'm not seeing anything here. There's actual download size, legacy notifications, bubbles may not be configurable or appear and system wide access. So there's nothing in this that's flagging an official flat pack such as LibreOffice versus an unofficial flat pack such as Google Chrome. And that's not to say if you're unfamiliar with all this, Google Chrome is not a dangerous flat pack. It's not unofficial in the purest sense. Google Chrome is packaged by the Google Chrome team. It's just not technically owned by Google. And so it falls outside of Flat Hub's verification process for some weird reason. <laughs> okay. It is a safe flat pack to use. Um, but what I wanted to do is I just kind of want to show that even inside of their application store, they still do not take advantage of the new, albeit controversial, ways that Flat Pack has to show verified versus unverified. Verified. Uh, Google Chrome is technically an unverified flat pack, whereas LibreOffice is a verified flat pack. But they have a massive improvement on this uh, on their app store. And I've always really liked the app store that they've had. It is it still has a lot of your classic uh, layouts. It's fast. It's way better of an app store than GNOME, um, the GNOME Software Center, which is like an abomination. You can see our, our uh, video on, uh, what do we do? Um, it was a, I think it was Ubuntu, right? No, it wasn't that. I don't know. We did another one uh, just recently. I'm completely forgetting which one it was now, <laughs> but um, uh, where it went into a little bit of detail about why I hate the GNOME Software Center. This has none of those problems. I really like the Software Center that Elementary OS does. 
This is our updates. So that little icon up there was telling us we have various updates. So there's an update to the document viewer and there's two runtime updates. So these are going to be, uh, I think these are going to be um, um, flat pack updates in there. So you can see that it is giving us our update notifications. Now, if you don't want your updates to constantly be annoying you, you can turn them off. So down in your systems tab down here, you can see that you can turn on or turn off automatic updates. They are turned off by default, which is what I like. Uh, I love the option to enable that if you want to, to disable it if you want to. And I like the fact that they're not automatically installed by default. So that's good, but you can turn that on. This is your hardware information. You can see here that we are using a virtual box. And there is a place inside of here for firmware updates, and there's a spot in here for driver updates. Now, I've attempted to update this driver a couple of times now. Uh, in fact, it says it's updated, and then it just says restart, and this driver update will not go away. So, it's, uh, unless that actually says it's actually being used, if that check mark box is what it's used for. Maybe that is the case, uh, which case it may be a little bit of more clarity. What's going on there uh, should be seen. But uh, overall, we can see that uh, the system is actually installing now, which is good. As far as the suite of applications they give us, we have the app center. We have a calculator, calendars, cameras, code viewer. There's feedback, multitasking views, music, photos, screenshots, system settings, web video, and terminal. And that is about it. So you can see it's not an overly bloated system. It has just enough tools to make it feel active, you know, just a, a good system. And then you can just go into the App Center now and install whatever else that you might want to install from there. Now, one of the classic issues I've had is they've only had a, a very, fairly small amount of software available. Uh, they actually fixed that a few versions ago by mostly leaning on the Flat Hub, which is full of things okay you can stop up okay i'm actually gonna have to go into that system settings thing and turn off those notification updates because this thing is annoying i have no earthly idea why it keeps on doing that like shut up <laughs> app center shut up <laughs> All right. um but you can see you can jump on into your office settings we can see we have recently updated apps up there we have the paid apps. This helps keep the developers paid. And then we have a number of free apps down here. And again, you can just do simple searches. Everything here looks like to be alphabetized. So you can just search what you're looking for there or just browse through it and just download what you need. So it does lean heavily on the flat packs. And I do not believe they actually use snaps. Um, I'm pretty sure they got rid of their snap support in a recent version. Let me just have a quick look at that snap list. So, um, you can, yeah, so they do not have snap installed. Uh, so you can still install it. It is Ubuntu boot, uh, base, but if we do oh, flat pack list, uh, you can see that they are actually leaning on flat packs for even a lot of the core functions, uh, kind of like Ubuntu leans on snaps for a lot of their core functions, the calculator, the camera, the network assistant, the music, the screen, like pretty much everything here is actually all flat packs. Um, that actually could be why we're getting so many update notifications. I do not know why or how, but Flatpak has more updates than Arch. It was, it's an accomplishment. I'm not sure. But uh, overall, my look at elementary OS 8.1, we have a functional system, so that is good. We have updates to the speed of the software center. So having a good, fast, and functional software center is amazing. They did an excellent job on that. And uh, for that reason, GNOME team, please take notice and fix that abomination you call a software store. Please. I like GNOME Software Center that it is available and consistent everywhere, but it is the most horrible piece of garbage I've ever seen. Uh, the hardware enablement stack for the kernel allows everything to work. And I love the new options inside of the network, bringing it up to speed with most other desktops and environments. I guess the only other thing we didn't mention is there was a, a bug where if you were searching for something in files, it didn't let you 
um, manually go here and type something in, uh, and that has been resolved as far as long as some other improvements inside of there as well. You can read their blog post about it on their website. And I will leave a link to that blog post uh, in the description so you can read about the changes yourself and download a copy if you are inclined to give it a try. So there is our brief look at Elementary OS 8.0.1. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.